Hey, welcome to the Steve Davis Show. Special guest today is Craig Snow, the head basketball coach and also athletic director of New Mexico Highlands. And thanks for coming in. Happy to be down here. It's been a while. I, I haven't been out of Vegas in a few months other than some, uh, some basketball trips. So excited to be down here for the day. I tell you what, we have so much to talk. I have, I have so much to talk about, but I just, you know, one, congratulations on a, on a good, good start of this year. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited about it. Uh, you know, we, we've um, been fortunate enough to get off to a good start. We've, uh, we're have we 10-3 and three right now, um, and of those three losses, two of them we've had double-digit leads in the second half that uh, we haven't been able to close out. But um, the guys are playing at a pretty high level, uh, scoring the basketball really well. We're averaging 89 a game, which is tops in the, in the RMAC, and we're, we're currently in the top 10 in our region, which is a, a pretty – high ranking and um, just hoping to keep things going. Uh, really like where we are and I think we, we still have a lot of areas where we can improve. Well, I think the most impressive thing from pro view standpoint and my standpoint, just because I'm a, I'm a new, born and raised New Mexican, is that you're doing it with New Mexico players. And, and that's, I mean, I'd like to talk about kind of those the guys in, in detail and what they contribute this year. So Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we really have, um, uh, I, mean, I think we have nine guys from the state that are uh, in our program currently um, and a lot of them are younger in, in the classes now Jordan Jones is a senior he's a two-year starter what a, what a what an unbelievable story I mean that's a story mm -hmm. in itself and, and then in the, in the change of his personality to, to what he the character he's become. It, yeah I mean in some ways he's he's maybe our one of our most bought-in guys you know he uh, he went to Mississippi Valley State out of high school he played high school for coach Broussard at, at Sandia um, then he ended up at Otero, and we played him in a scrimmage. We scrimmaged Otero every year, um, and we've, we've had three players from Otero. We had Jacob Holland, we've, who was at Los Lunos Otero, James Healy, Cibolo Otero, and then Jordan Jones, Sandio Otero. Um, played so him in a Otero scrimmage. Otero connection there. Have though. a huge mm -hmm. connection there. I mean, they're three hours up the road, and, um, you know, Coach Reed, who's now the head coach of Shadron, and I have been friends for a long time, and then Brendan O'Connor as well. So we, we had some really good connections there. Um, Jordan came down to scrimmage, and he kicked our butt. I mean, he had 24 points, um, hitting threes. And that's the biggest thing. He, from high school to where he is now, he, he's such a dangerous shooter. Um, he's always been athletic and able to score in transition, but his shooting ability um, and and what he's done defensively has made him become a more Defensively is what his because he's so length, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he kind creates of a lot of problems. A, a guy I play with, Michael Cooper. I mean, you know, he just and he does yeah. it. He, you know, he does it effortlessly. <laughs> Coop's one but, level, you know, and, but one Jordan level. in a lot of ways does that for us. Um, he can guard uh, the one through to five. We can switch everything with him. Um, he plays with tremendous energy, uh, and his shooting has improved. I mean, he's shooting last year. He made around 50 or 50 plus threes at above 40 percent. He's doing. He's on pace for more than that this year at the same percentage. So, you know, we've gotten a lot out of him. And then we have the two sophomores that we recruited together: Desmond uh, Carpenter from Cibola and DJ Bustos that from there in West. And both are, you know, Desmond's playing well, about the 30 minutes a game. Leading scorer in New Mexico, if I'm correct. The state's all-time leading scorer, DJ. Um, but they're both, you know, interesting in that they're both coaches' kids. Um, both their fathers played at Highlands. Um, they're playing 20 plus minutes a game as freshmen last year, and now you know they've they've taken and kind of expanded their roles even more. Um, in a lot of ways, they're the nucleus of the foundation that we started to build with in-state kids. You know, Jordan being a junior college transfer came in a little older, but Desmond and DJ coming in as freshmen, you know, that gives them that four-year kind of track, and then we have a, a good group of guys coming in um, um, behind them in, in the freshman class. So. Desmond and DJ have been huge um, for us, just giving us like the glue of guys that you know what you can get night in, night out. Um, they're homegrown, um, they're legacy guys, uh, and they've they've just done a tremendous job of of buying into the program, and and they've just continued to get better, and um, are only going to continue to get better. Well, you know, I, you know, we've become a fan. I mean, I've always been a fan of Craig Snow, just from just from from the college day, from 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 U and M and that 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 relationship, but uh, you know, I tell you what, five years have gone by quick. <laughs> Gosh, I, I couldn't believe it when it. you said it. I mean, yeah, it, it seems like yesterday that uh, you know that this opportunity came about, and um, 
the challenges that it, that it presented. And it's taken, us, it's taken us some time to get to this point where like, I really like the direction we're at. I feel great about our foundation. I feel great about the way we're recruiting. I, I feel good that we're starting to get the right guys into the lot program. Of, a lot of people talking about your program, talking about, you know, you know this is the place that I want to go play basketball. Mm -hmm. If you want to go play basketball and uh, yeah, and I think it and fits. I mean, I'm hearing it from yeah. just because we do the games, but I'm just saying it's, it's amazing. One, I guess the word is how many New Mexico Highlands are in, in Albuquerque. I guess that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's the first the thing that surprises you, or surprised me. I mean, and it happened really initially upon getting the job is you, you start to understand how many connections there are to the to that university um, in the coaching community, in the teaching community. Um, because it Highlands was traditionally a teachers' college, so a lot of teachers and coaches got their, um, you know, education from Highlands. And you look at like Ray Rodriguez, who was Desmond's high school coach, uh, Terry Darnell at Bernalillo. You know, you can uh, Wilson Holland, Jacob's father, played it, played it uh, New Mexico Highlands. Um, you start to get into those connections. Gary Tripp, the, the trips, former MMA, yes, yeah, the, the former executive director of the NMAA. Um, so there's a lot of connections there. I think there's also the benefit of we're, we're really close to Albuquerque. You know, it's an hour and 40 minute drive. Um, so you can go play basketball. We play, I believe, to be a, a really exciting style of basketball. I mean, we average 89 points a game. We've had five home games. We scored over 104 times. Um, it's very free flowing. We play high tempo on both ends of the floor. Um, and that fits kind of the New Mexico kids that I see, like when we evaluate. You know, we've signed Jalen Munn already from Cleveland who's in an up-tempo system already. Um, and I think kind of like there's a, a nice cohesiveness to, to how basketball is thought of in New Mexico, um, how we play, our proximity to the metro area, um, and the fact that you know, I'm really bought in on, on recruiting the kids here. And, and we recruit a certain type of kid. I mean, you can kind of go down the line and see we, we're starting to really develop a model for what it means to be a, a New Mexico Highlands Cowboy. And I'm, I mean, I'm really pleased with where we are at the, at the current moment. Well, Craig, we're gonna go to the dream style top 10 plays of the week. Maybe there's a recruit there you can, you can, you can <laughs> start, you can yeah. do while you're sitting here yeah, relaxing. Absolutely. But the, let's go with that and then come back and talk more about the upcoming games that uh, end, the, end the season. Awesome. just barely and Isles will step into a deep three and Steve we've talked and Caccioli changes mind midair Bruce as they've made Volcano execute in the half court strong hands of Terry Josh gonna bounce it beautifully and ahead. Again. Here comes Barton in transition. He's got lumber to Flores underneath for the laying off the win. You gotta be very careful because he has four fouls. He just take Wallace is just taking all the night. On the near side, it's Ramos. Ramos, a nice handoff on the... No. And a long rebound, and Hill, the freshman, tapped it to himself. In transition to Aragon, and he slams it home. Let's see if he wants to dunk in transition. Send it in. Terry, good look at a three for Josh. No, oh, what a put back. Get into the game with Garden Swartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 shut helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. 
The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. Hey, welcome back to the Steve Davis Show. We've got Craig Snow, the head basketball coach at New Mexico Highlands, also the athletic director. And, you know, we talked we had a little bit about, you know, good season so far. Yeah, but uh, this weekend, it's, this is the turning point in your season, really. You've got home games. you got to always protect your home mm -hmm. court. No question. I mean, we... Uh, we play six out of eight games on the road in January, so this is our only home weekend. Um, and we, we, we have Mesa in on uh, Friday night, who's ranked currently ranked eighth in the region. We're ranked ninth. They're second in conference and scoring. We're first. Um, you know, they've got Connor Nichols, who's a tremendous um, scorer and, and veteran team with Brandon Hoffer at the point guard, and they um, they play really well. A very very dangerous team that we have at home on Friday. Um, and then Western State on Saturday, who actually we played in the last home game of the year last year and lost to them in a game for the playoffs. So um, a big weekend for us, a big weekend, a, another chance to prove ourselves. We've, we're currently undefeated at home. We've played really well at home, and um, we look to continue that this weekend. Well, if you can't go watch it you can, and you're in Albuquerque, it's on Channel 26. And the nice thing about it, girls play first and boys, so you're, you're actually yeah. getting, getting four games. Absolutely. The women play at 5 o'clock. We play at 7. Um, you know, we've been streaming our games live on our website as well. So it's, it's one of the neat things about um, our conference. And one of the things I struggle with as a college basketball fan anymore, it's like it's hard to find games on TV. Like, if you're, unless you're trying to find an ACC game or something. But even like the Mountain West, like I follow the Mountain West. And I have a challenging time finding the games on TV. And the, the one cool thing about um, the RMAC is all of our games are streamed online for free. You can access it at the on each school's website. Um, when you, you find the game, you can find a live video. And you know we we've been fortunate enough to our partnership with ProView and with Richard Tripp, who's our play-by-play -play guy, um, to to have a really good um, production quality broadcast. Um, and it's been it's been good for us. And uh, so if you're not able to make it to the game, not able to make it up to Vegas. Um, you can certainly watch online, and we'd love to love to see you following it. Well, I tell you, yeah, it's been something that that's one of the main things when you, you know, we talked about your coaching five years ago, and then all of a sudden, right in the middle of that, you become, you know, two years later, you become the interim athletic director, mm -hmm. and then. And, I can tell you enjoy that. That's something that you really enjoy. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it just broadens the scope a little bit of, um, you know, for me, ultimately, like, coaching is a part of, like, leadership, and, and being an athletic director is part of leading coaches. And um, for me, it's been fun because I've, I kind of grew up playing every sport. You know, I grew up playing baseball and football, and I started playing golf young. I played basketball, obviously, but I was like pretty involved with every sport. You know, my wife was a volleyball player. She ran track in college. Like, there's not a lot that I don't, I haven't been around. Um, that small time atmosphere. I mean, it's, yeah, it's the small time atmosphere. Really, really, that's what you did. Right. Like, and you did it based on the season. You know, if it was during the fall, we played football. During the spring, we played baseball. During the winter, we played. I mean, it's just that's what we did. And um, so, like, to be able to be in part of something to where I already kind of have an interest. You know. Um, it's been really neat. It's been a, a learning opportunity for me, but it's something that, that I feel fortunate about that we can hope to continue. Well, I tell you, I mean, it's, you know, back, back I, I kind of got you off on that athletic, but it's, it, was, it was kind of surprising to me because, I mean, I know your passion was to become a head basketball coach. That opportunity came up and, and uh, you took Highlands and then uh, what you're doing with the athletic, being the athletic director is, 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 is pretty impressive it's on itself, besides winning basketball games. Is there, do you have a little bit of a hard time of um, being, you know... There's a balance. Balance. Yeah. yeah, there's a balance. But, I mean, the thing I've, I've appreciated about it is there are times, like in coaching, that you can get so bogged down with minutia that I don't have time to do that. So I think it's helped my coaching because I don't have time of, right. to nitpick and get focused on things that don't matter. Um, and I have to keep it very focused on like, these are the most important things. 
um, this is what matters the most, this is what I can control, and just keep it right into that area. Um, whereas if, I, if I, I'm the type that if you give me five days to do a scout, we're going to watch 20 film and you know, 20 games, and we're going to have everything down. And at the end of the day, you, know, you can have the best scouting report in the war world. It's about having your team ready to play and not trying to play that game, not trying to beat the scouting report. So in some ways, it's helped me. Um, there are days that obviously it's challenging. Um, there are times whenever you want to be coaching and, and you're, you're finding yourself in administrative duties. And there's times whenever you want to be an AD, but you have to attend to the, the basketball side of things. But the biggest thing I can say is I have great um, staff on both ends. Like our athletic department staff has been tremendous. My basketball staff is great um, with, with Steven and, and Mike. And, what, and all also the do. administration part of it. I mean, you got to have that part of it. Yeah, and, and our athletic department is very strong. So um, it's, been, it's been fun. It's been a learning experience. And, uh, you know, but it's been challenging as well. But, you know, I just thought about it. So you, you, how does that, when you close the door and, and the athletic director has to talk to the basketball coach and discipline, <laughs> and, and, and discipline the ba basketball coaches? Okay. I've, taken, I've, I've actually <laughs> limited um, basketball more than what it was prior to me getting the AD role. Like, um, you know, I, I, we've, I've reduced our yeah, scholarships well, that's a little bit. Yeah, right, I've reduced our scholarships a little bit, um, you know, trying to find ways to – to make us more competitive. I mean, the one the one thing I really like about about our situation is we don't have unlimited resources, and a lot of schools are like that. But when you don't have unlimited resources, it forces you to maximize what you do have. So, like, we're constantly trying to find our strengths and how can we maximize every dollar that we have and how can we make it go the farthest possible. A lot of that ends up being in like recruiting strategy, scholarship strategy. A lot of it in circles back to us recruiting New Mexico kids because it's. You know, my, the dollars it cost me to recruit DJ Bustos and Desmond Carpenter were drives to Albuquerque and West Las Vegas High School, as opposed to flying in kids on visits. And that goes all the way down our department. So the economics of it, um, our, our philosophy fits our budget. And, it, and because we don't have that, it, it causes us to be creative. Um, so I enjoy that part of it. You know, it's like Moneyball in a lot of ways, which one of my favorite movies, favorite books. Um, you know, in some ways we're the last dog to the bowl and we have to find a way to be competitive with what we have, and, and um, I kind of I, I love that challenge. Well, I tell you, you know, you you've done a, you know done a great job, you know, from from ProView Networks and bring and embracing us and giving us an opportunity to highlight you know the New Mexico players and also the outside players and like you said, the internet. Uh, a great broadcast brings means a lot if if because so many eyeballs that you don't mm -hmm. know are watching. Absolutely, and it, and it's. It's international too. I, I mean, that's the, the cool thing about like the online. It, you know, we have, we have as much as we have New Mexico kids. We have a, a seven footer from Slovakia. We have an Australian guard. I mean, we we've had international kids as well. Um, we have we have guys from Miami, Florida. We ha we have guys from Las Vegas, Nevada. So you know, their families who aren't as close and aren't able to to make the trip more frequently are able to watch and follow. So it's it's definitely something, that, and it doesn't just affect us in basketball. I mean, it. It's a football, volleyball, all of our sports are streamed live, and, and I think it's an opportunity for us to you know, advertise ourselves as a department and, and show, one, we're connected to a really competitive conference in the, in the Rocky Mountain Athletic, and we're in a very competitive NCAA Division II, and I think a lot of people don't quite understand how good that level really is. Well, Craig, keep that thought. We're going to go to a little, uh, little break here and then come back and talk about your other athletic programs besides your basketball. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walk to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfriedatabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Proview Sports Network. The Barley Bowl. 
proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. Don't forget, every ProView Network sporting event is on sale at our DVD store. Go to www.ProViewNetworks.com to buy your DVD today. Hey, welcome back to the Steve Davis Show. And special guest again is Craig Snow, athletic director and head basketball coach at uh, New Mexico Highlands. And Craig, you know, you know, great boys basketball, girls. You, you, you're you're bringing all you want all your programs to be on top level. And yeah, how, how yeah. are you accomplishing that? Well, I think the. The biggest thing is having the right people in place to lead lead the programs, um, and I, I feel like we have a really strong coaching staff. And um, you know, it's trying to just get, you know, I, I view my job as athletic director a lot of the time is like, just how can I help our coaches lead their programs to the best? Like, how can I support them the best to give them what they need to be successful? Um, you know, the the one benefit of us, I, I would think, it would be a benefit for our other coaches that being a dual role AD. We don't have times for a lot of meetings. Like we don't, we don't have times for weekly sit downs. It's very much we're talking to head coaches about, hey, you know, what what are the five things you need to get your program where you want it to be, and and just keeping our focus there. Um, you know, our football program has made great strides um, in, in the in the last two years. Um, very competitive at the beginning of the year. I very mean, competitive. Better, I, mean, I mean, we 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 were talking about a program that won zero games um, two years ago. To to now we're, you're winning four. You're in two or three games that could have gone either way. Um, great homecoming game, by the way. Great, tremendous great, homecoming great, game. You know what, and you're that building was that all up. scheduling on our part, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> just uh, 63 to, what was it, 63 to 61 down to the very end. I mean, the cool thing about small c college football that I've found is like the scores. You know, it, the, the, the depth in the second half, it becomes a free-for-all. And I've seen games go from... 20 to 21 to 50 to 58, you know, and a lot more close than what we've seen in the uh, college football playoff thus far. But um, it's been fun. And, you know, our other programs have developed. We've got, we've performed really strong academically um, across the board. You know, we're recruiting good student athletes um, that, are, that are there for the right reasons. And, you know, I feel really good with where we are, but I think we can still make a lot of progress um, in the next few years. You know, you touched on a little bit, and I, want, I really want, it's, and you said it, RMAC. That, that's a tough. I mean, that's people. I mean, I'll, I'll just use myself until Tom Dragmaster and yourself, and when we started going and watching some games going back 10 years ago, that that, that they have some athletes. I mean, this is not a, just a, this is a tough no, conference. No, I mean, when I when I got into the league, Derek White was playing in the league. He was a first round NBA draft pick. He's playing for San Antonio now. The, the talent level is really high, but the coaching and the structure and the back to back make it a real challenge. And you add into that that it's the largest geographic, you know, from Salt Lake to South Dakota, all the way down to Vegas. Um, you know, your trips are tough. You're playing on Friday night a lot of times. Like, we went to Dixie State. It was our first conference loss. We lose in St. George. Well, first of all, it was finals week. So let's go through this. We, we fly out of Albuquerque on Thursday night, last flight out, 9 p.m. You land in Vegas at 10. You get into St. George about 2 o'clock, OK? Um, you get up, you play St. George the next day, you lose, go to sleep, wake up early, drive four and a half hours to Salt Lake, play them, they hadn't lost at home yet, beat them, get up the next morning at six o'clock, you fly back, play, you know, and it's just constant. And so like these trips become really, really challenging where you play on a Friday night, you got a four hour drive in between, you got a short preparation. So I think that's the biggest challenge is we, we play back to back to back on the Friday, Saturday, the travel's hard, the competition's hard. Um, and the players are good. I mean, we're playing um, good players. I mean, you look at you look at our roster. I mean, our roster is pretty darn talented. Um, you know, our guys are playing better. We've had in the last three games, we've had two different guys score 40 points or more. Um, you know, and our guys are finally just starting to hit their mode where we're starting to play a little bit better as a team. So, I mean, I think it's a really high level, and you've got to be ready to go. It's college basketball. Well, that's one thing that we. Tom Dragmaster and myself, we noticed when we played at, uh, at the pit, or it, it was there, it was the, the, uh, 
the upside. I mean, and I even mm -hmm. I remember texting you and just saying, "Look, you're, this is going to be an exciting team. It's going to be exciting to see what it happens." And and uh, and sure enough, it's you know it's very exciting. Yeah, and that's where I you know the thing I really like about our group right now is I still feel that we're weeks away from playing our best. Like, and that's perfect. You know, we're because we're, we're, we're not, not there peaked. yet. We're just not there yet. We haven't clicked together. We've won a lot of games um, thus far, but we. We haven't really clicked yet, you know. We've, if you like, I mentioned earlier, you know, we the we've lost two games of our three losses that we've had leads, you know, and and when you, especially that last one, because you, you were you were in the last three well, minutes or so. You yeah, were, we're, we're at Regis, who was picked to win our conference, and we're up seven with three and a half to go with the ball. We have some good possessions, we just don't make shots, but those are those are games you have to close out. I think there are games like four weeks from now we will close out, because um, our guys are really attentive. I mean, they're focused, they're competitive. Um, they're paying attention. Um, they continue to get better. They continue. We had a great practice this morning. Um, so I mean, I think uh, you know we're getting to that point. We just have to stay healthy. And you know, it, it, again, in, in college basketball, you can't judge a lot off of one game. So it's like you're just trying to build to where, just trying to chalk up as many wins as you can get. I mean, so what's been so the exciting moment of being an athletic director and coaching? I mean. You know, the thing that surprised me um, that I didn't really expect was, like, the wins feel just as good as they do when you're the coach. Like, uh, you know, when our volleyball team wins or our football team wins, you know. So maybe, you're engaged with every, all, yeah, all like the Yeah, like, you, you feel a part of it. I didn't expect that. Um, the losses don't feel quite as bad. Um, you know, it's not like you have to go break down film for six hours and, you know, stare, stare at that. But, I, I mean, I've really enjoyed the fact that the successes, um, whether they be individual successes with student athletes or the team or coaches, like those feel just as good as what it does whenever you're a coach and you go on the road and, you know, you win a tough road game, like, which is an unbelievable feeling. Like the wins that our teams do and the, 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 the small successes that they have, they feel just as good. And that, that was a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, because you know it's a little different when you're that involved, and I try to be as involved as possible with our students and with our coaches, and um, you know I, I think that's been really enjoyable. Well, I think you take pride, in, and I know your your wife does, and, and, and your and your family. You've talked to me, but you know seeing a kid graduate, besides just seeing, I mean, I know that, that mm -hmm. sometimes you take kids on that you know they just just say, say it like it is. They have a little baggage or whatever to them, and to see them turn their, their lives around and, and, and see that your program and your school was one of the main reasons to get that done. And that's something we talk about in the, in the recruiting process. Like with basketball, there's a lot of stuff that's unpredictable. You know, like we recruit talent and character, but you, you don't really know until they're there and playing. I can't guarantee playing time. I can't guarantee they're gonna get 15 shots a game. As a coach, I can't guarantee you're going to love the way I coach. I can't guarantee you're going to love our system. But I can guarantee you that I'm going to hold your son accountable to get his education. And I can guarantee you that he's going to be expected to perform a certain way. So, like, when you, when you base it around that, that, like, the ultimate goal here is that you're going to graduate and you're going to get a degree. And in some cases, you're changing lives. A lot, a lot of our players, it, you know, this first time that a kid, person in their family has even gone to college, much less have an opportunity to graduate. So, like, holding them accountable to that standard, and then when they finally achieve that, something that maybe hasn't been done in their family before, or maybe certain things have happened, I mean, that's really what we're doing. Like, and that's making a difference, much more so than telling them the appropriate pick and roll coverage in a game. Like, that's, that's a part of, like, why they're there, but it has to be about the education. Well, Craig, I want to thank you for coming on the Steve Davis thank Show. And, and good luck this weekend, and we'll be watching you on Comcast Channel Looking 26. Looking forward to it. All Thanks, right. Steve. Appreciate it.